This episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium. Last episode, we looked at the atom. We introduced ourselves to it. We left our episode when we were learning its origin, which is, of course, is the Big Bang, the origin of everything, as per science today. We learned that the shortest length of time that we can divine was the planta. Today, our journey on tracing the atom's origin starts here at the Planck Epoch of the universe, known as the Planck Epoch, occurred at 10 raised to negative 43 seconds. During this time, it is believed that all the fundamental forces, including electromagnetism, the weak force, and the strong force, were unified as one grand unified force at this point. However, it is important to note that this isn't exactly T is equal to 1 as we, we want to avoid the singularity. The state of the universe at this epoch and what happened before it remained unknown. The earliest time we can theorize about is the period of inflation which occurred from about 10 raised to negative 36 seconds to about 10 raised to negative 33 seconds after the Big Bang. During this time, whatever existed prior to inflation experienced rapid exponential expansion, faster than the speed of light. This allowed because there is no theoretical restriction on the speed at which space itself can expand. It expanded from a point to a point about the size of a baseball. You might wonder how this is even possible since we know that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. While this is true for information transfer, cosmic inflation involves the expansion of space itself, allowing distant points to move away from each other faster than light can travel between them. Most of our current understanding comes from the period after inflation. So the accurate way to view the Big Bang is not at a single point of origin, but there's a period when the early universe was extremely hot, dense, and rapidly expanding. Thus, the Big Bang is a description of everything that occurred after T is equal to 1. Inflation is believed to have occurred from 10 raised to negative 36 to 10 raised to negative 33 seconds. The energy source behind this rapid expansion and cosmic inflation erased any information about what existed before it. The theory of the standard model of cosmology is well understood, starting at about 10 raised to negative 12 seconds, as the universe's energy levels can be reproduced in current particle accelerators. Before this time, we can only speculate about the events. From about 10 raised to negative 3 seconds to 10 raised to 12 seconds, strong force and electromagnetic and weak forces, collectively known as electroweak force, was still unified. The origin of the initial massless fundamental particles is uncertain. They might have condensed from the energies present during the Big Bang or an inflation field containing inflations could have decayed into the fundamental particles we observe today. Around 10 raised to negative 11 seconds, the temperature drops further to 10 raised to 15 Kelvin, marking the beginning of the quark epoch. The electromagnetic and weak forces begin to separate, leading to electroweak symmetry breaking. The X fields gains a and zero potential, imparting mass to the fundamental particles of the standard model. At this point, the essential components of atoms are in place, and the universe temperature is around 1 quadrillion Kelvin. As the universe continues to expand and cool, the extremely high temperatures present prevent quarks from combining into hadrons like protons and neutrons. However, as temperature drops to about 1 trillion Kelvin at 10 raised to negative 5 seconds, 
the quark plasma transitions into a hadron gas consisting of protons, neutrons, and certain mesons, which eventually decay into photons and electrons. As the temperature further decreases, particles and antiparticles begin to annihilate, resulting in lighter particle and antiparticle pairs, such as neutrinos and photons. Interestingly, there is a slight asymmetry in this process, which with the more particles being generated than antiparticles, leading to the survival of certain quarks and electrons. This enables the formation of protons, neutrons, and electrons, which are essential for creating the initial atoms. The annihilation process culminates with the Lipton epoch, which occurs around one second mark when the temperature subsides to about 5 billion Kelvin. During this epoch, leptons conclude the annihilation process. Following this remarkable display, the majority of the matter particles transforms into photons and neutrinos. However, due to the matter antimatter asymmetry, a small quantity of protons, neutrons, and electrons remain surviving as the fundamental building blocks for atoms. At around a few minutes after the universe inception, the epoch of the Big Bang nucleosynthesis, PBN, begins with protons and neutrons produced in equal numbers. Free neutrons are inherently unstable and undergo beta decay, transforming into protons over approximately 10 raised to 50 minutes. As the temperature remains high, proton neutron conversion is balanced by neutron proton conversion. But as the universe cools further, neutron decay becomes more prevalent. Free neutrons strive to join other hadrons and form more extensive nuclei before decay, leading to the universe consisting of about 75% hydrogen nuclei and 25% helium-4 nuclei, along with small amounts of deuterium, helium-3, and trace quantities of, of lithium-9 nuclei. During this period, the environment, predominantly consisting of ionized nuclei without bound electrons, the formation of neutral atoms requires electrons to attach to positively charged nucleons to achieve charge balance. However, the universe is still scorching and electrons can only briefly adhere to nucleons before being forcibly separated due to their immense energy. As a result, the universe remains opaque and photons carrying light continuously interact with nucleons and electrons, hindering their free propagation through space. This photon epoch last for about 380,000 years until the universe cools down to 3,000 Kelvin. At this point, electrons possess significantly reduced energy allowing the electromagnetic force to permanently bind them to nucleons, leading to the formation of stable neutral atoms in a process called recombination. As a consequence, photons are no longer confined amidst the chaos of positive nucleons and negative electrons. They are now free to traverse the universe. If an observer was present in space, he or she would be able to observe this light. Today, the first light of the universe, known as the cosmic microwave background, CMB, can be perceived in all directions. This light was emitted during the formation of vastable neutral atoms, providing us with valuable insights into the early universe and the origin of atoms. Atoms constantly interact. However, to comprehend this, we must first determine the definition of interact. Our typical understanding of interaction is based on the macroscopic world. I place my palm on the chair. My palm interacts with the chair. You step on the floor, you interact with the floor, and so forth. 
in these instances, one solid boundary or service interact with another solid boundary or service. Nevertheless, our microscopic understanding becomes less applicable at a microscopic level, which leads to confusion about interaction. If we could magnify the scale to atomic level, we would witness a chaotic envisionment.